victory. Thank you. And so many other situations. And so if you look into any Christian hymn now, <clears throat> you find songs about God, creation, songs about Christ, song, songs about hymns about redemption, and so on. It is important to remind ourselves of this, that every occasion somebody took the time to thank God and to pen down their feelings so that we coming later can sing. The psalmist says, ye servants of the Lord, praise the Lord. People who know him, you and I, we have no excuse to make life one long continuum of just maybe boredom. We are the first to praise the name of the Lord and to proclaim his faithfulness. And the psalmist says that from the morning, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. In other words, 24 hours from east to west, continual praise should be offered to God. It is our duty. It's not us and when or when we feel like it. When you wake up in the morning, what's your first thought? Mobile phone, Instagram, WhatsApp. Or you turn your thoughts to God before you have your morning devotion to thank him that he's given you the gift of another day. The name of the Lord is mentioned in the first three verses three times. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The name of the Lord is to be praised. And then it says, praise the name of the Lord. In this one. God's name is attached to God's character. And God's character is consistent. Because he has a good name, he is good. And his name is to be extolled and glorified. Unlike human beings, the king, human leaders and the kings of the earth, whose reputation is different from their character, and who use public relations to manage their image, God's reputation, reputation is consistent with his character. And just to clarify, reputation is what people think you are. Character is who you really are. So after exhorting the Lord's servants to offer him constant praise, he declares that the Lord's throne is on high. He's most exalted. He's the greatest of all and he's worthy to be praised. Many other Psalms talk about God as creator. He has given us human beings a beautiful earth to live on, and he sustains us. As giver of everything, he deserves our praise. And as the psalm goes on, he talks about God's compassion and his mercy. You know, the fact that he is great and mighty and high above everything, in spite of that, he looks on the humble. In this our world, rulers are very far removed from their subjects. You go through a lot of red tape and complex protocol to see a president, a prime minister, a head of state, even parliamentarians. <laughs> Unfortunately, some men of God have copied this and cocooned themselves in red tape. That is not to be commended. God, the God we serve is accessible. And he looks on earth to look out for those who are poor and needy. He doesn't only look, he goes into action on their behalf. He talks about lifting the needy from the ash heap. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. Beggars sat in the dust in those days. These days they still do. And the ash heap was a place where the, the garbage was thrown of the, of the town or city in ancient Israel and then they burn them. So the place always has, has a fire burning. Unwanted people, undesired people, desire, uh, diseased people were consigned to the ash heap. You remember Job, when uh, misfortune befell him, he sat in the ashes. But God looks at such people and he raises us up. A better example of this is when we were entangled in sin and lost and didn't know which way we were going, which end was up. God looked at us and he sent Jesus Christ to come and die for us, to pull us out of indignity 
and fear and oppression and to call us his own children. That is God lifting the needy from the ash heap. And then he talks about, he settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children. The Bible is full of a lot of women who had problem having children. In ancient times, even as in our day, it was a stigma. And in those days, without offspring, people had no support in their old age. So the children were the insurance policy, the old age insurance policy of people, especially women. So Abraham's wife had a problem having children. Isaac's wife, Rebecca, Jacob's favorite wife, Rachel, and then Hannah, the mother of Samuel, then Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. And these are some of the famous ones. I'm sure there were countless others. The Bible is saying that by fulfilling the desires of their hearts, God removed their sigma. And for this reason, God is to be highly extolled. In our situation, whenever God reaches out his hand to reach us and to put us in a position, a situation we did not deserve, let us never think that by some luck we have attained that. Let us remember to extol the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's turn to the New Testament. We know the story of Mary. She did not expect it. And the whole angel, God sent an angel all the way from heaven to visit this teenage girl and to give her the message. And so she begins to say, my soul glorifies the Lord and my, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In other versions, it says, my soul magnifies the Lord. And the song is called the Magnificat from the Latin word, my soul magnifies the Lord from the Latin word magnify. And so Mary's song reads in part like Hannah's song, Hannah the mother of Samuel. If you look at first Samuel chapter two, Hannah says, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies for I delight in your deliverance. And then he said, there's no one holy like the Lord. There's none besides you. There is no rock like our God. And it continues. These were songs that the women of Israel sang and they knew, many people knew it. And so Mary talks about the fact that generations will call her blessed and indeed Mary is blessed. Some people worship her as deity. The Bible does not recommend that because she also, like all of us, needed salvation. But her praise looks at what God has done. He has, he has, he has said, it's about eight times the way it's listed here. Mary's praise was to God. And when we pray and praise God, God should be our focus. Verses 46 to 49 talks about what God did for her. And then 54 to 55 talk about what God has done for the nation Israel. So she recounted her blessings and linked it with the fate of her country. Sometimes when we are in trouble, we go into great detail about our problems. And when God answers us, we summarize our praises. Lord, thank you for everything you have done for me. Our praises should be even more detailed than our prayers, than our requests. We should count our blessings, name them one by one. Mary saw what God has done for Israel because he has promised the fulfillment of God's promise that he will send us a Messiah had come through. And she was happy that she was an instrument, an agent of this. Sometimes we think that one of the unfortunate sayings among Ghanaians is country broke or country no broke, we, we, we day inside. It doesn't matter what happens to this country, uh, more or less, we are here, we'll be fine. No. Your destiny is tied to the destiny of this country. 
if you look at what's happening in Ukraine, even the children who had no idea of what NATO is and what anything is, they were affected. I saw the TV um, shot when people were running from their homes because the house was set on fire. And as they were running, a drone came and fired at them, all of them dead on the streets. They were not parliamentarians, ordinary people. That is why God told the people of ancient Israel when they were in exile. He said in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7, he said, pray for the prosperity of the country to which you have been sent. For if that country prospers, you also will prosper. I wonder how often you pray for this country. Even our prayers sometimes get politicized. Those we don't like, we don't pray for. In fact, worse yet, we, we wish them ill. Pray for this country. Because it doesn't depend on your knowledge. Whatever happens to this country will happen to you. Now, I want you to look at your life and look at the milestones throughout your life so far, where God has brought you. Maybe you were born into a privilege, you were born as a privileged person into a, a well-to-do home, so you don't see any contrast. But think of the past two years. What merit did you have for God to spare you from COVID and keep you alive? What made you so special that God said, let me not take you again? Think of the blessings you don't deserve that God has given you. Things that you could never have worked for. What song of praise will you give him? What memorial have you raised to him in your heart and in your mind or by your lifestyle? The songwriter said, through hidden dangers, toils, and snares, he gently cleared my way. Sometimes people go for about three years and they never visit a doctor because they are well. Some time ago, I asked the congregation here, that's many years ago, if you've never sat in a dentist chair, raise your hand. And there were quite a number of people. They've never had any toothache, ever. And they think because they eat healthy or whatever. <laughs> Have you ever thanked God for that? As someone said, you think your ears are there, so they, they will always hear. And for some, it is only when they fall ill that they realize that they have been well all along. Don't take anything God gives for granted. Let us find reasons to praise him. God has created a beautiful and orderly world. And despite the careless living of humanity, there's still a lot of beauty to behold. It's true, there are problems in the world, but the world is not full of problems. We have to get our perspective. When we praise God, we fix our eyes on the person who holds everything together. There's a saying that if you hold a, the smallest coin in Ghana, is, is it five pesos? If you hold it close enough to your eyes, it will blot out the sun. But then the two don't compare in terms of size or anything. Psalm 139, the psalmist says, is fearfully and wonderfully made. The doctors can tell you about the human body, which after all the medical science, new discoveries are being made. Psalm 103 also says a wonderful thing about what God has done. We are not going to read it. We'll just look at a few verses in the first five verses. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Then he says he forgives all your sins. He heals all your diseases. He crowns you with love and compassion. He satisfies your, your desires with good things so that your youth is renew, uh, renewed like an eagle's. So God does all these things for us, even for those who don't give him a thought, who, who rebel against him. God 
takes care of us. Why do we sometimes find it difficult to praise God? When things don't look right in our lives. Maybe you are in a season of mourning, like some of us are mourning. The sky over your life is dark, and you cannot find a reason to praise God. Perhaps that oppression and depression is so bad, you begin to say, say to yourself, I wish I were dead. What am I living for? And sometimes it looks like the problems will never end. You stumble out of one, and then you land in another. And you ask yourself, why have I been cursed? Why am I the only a person with problems, it seems? In times like this, search for at least one thing to praise God anyway. It's easy to praise God when things are all right. But when you praise God, not for what is happening, but in spite of what is happening, it's called a sacrifice of praise. And sacrifices are costly. You give up something, you put your feelings aside, and you find a reason to say, thank you, Father. You do not feel like it. And it's not that you, you are praising him to bribe him, as if you can ever bribe God. But you do that because you believe that, as the hymn writer says, his love in times past forbids you to think he will leave you at last in trouble to sink. You know that this is a passing phase. You remember, we have said before, that if you are traveling from here to Kumasi, the landscape is not the same. Every few miles, okay, uh, even feet, you f the tree you find here is not the same here. Different landscapes until you arrive at your destination. We praise him in times of difficulty because we have faith that this situation is not permanent, it's a passing phase. When you pass through the dark part of life, you experience sometimes joy and pain, excitement, discomfort, sorrow, heartache, poverty. Let's remember that we are on a journey. We have not arrived yet. And the point of arrival, as the hymn writer says, our end is the glory of the Lord. And as we journey, God will give us moments of joy, periods of rest. But our eternal abode is still ahead of us. When we bring sacrifice of praise to God, it's a sign that we trust him. And that we believe that his promises will come to pass for us. That tears will not be our everlasting food. Times will change. The sky, the sun will shine again brightly in the sky. There was a time when the prophet Jeremiah had a lot of problems. He saw Jerusalem being destroyed. And he himself went through a lot of affliction. And then he saw the princes of Israel, beautiful young men, enslaved by the Babylonians, carrying firewood, children who were delicate, and so on. And they were enslaved. But then in his song, Lamentations, he says something in chapter 3, verse 31. He says, for men are not cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love, for he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to the children of men. Lamentations 3, 31 to 33. So praising God in all the changing scenes of life will lift up your spirits. That's one reason why we should praise God. It will keep us from sinking and having a pity party. Psalm 42, verse 5. David said, why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you so depressed within me? And then the response is, I will praise the Lord.
David said, why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you more or less depressed within me? And he doesn't respond by saying, I'll have a pity party. I once read about a, a little boy who, when he was sad, he would sit alone in his corner and say, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, I feel like eating worms. If you get into depression, you may not feel like eating worms, but you feel rather wormy. <laughs> no. The psalmist says, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So when life is great, praise the Lord. When life looks threatening, praise him all the same. When we work hard on the relationship, hoping to save it, but then it comes crumbling down, find a reason to praise him. And when you try to save the marriage and you are handed divorce papers, praise him. When you are hoping to get a promotion and you are passed over, or worse yet, you are fired, you are laid off, find a reason to praise God. When life looks very threatening, and you don't see any stars in the sky, not to talk about the moon, find a reason to praise him. Praise shows, as we said, that you trust him to take you through. It's a sign that you have faith in God, and as Andrew Crouch sang in, uh, in his classic song, I thank God for the mountains, and I thank him for the valley, and I thank him for the times he's brought me through. If I never had any problems, I wouldn't have known that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God can do. There are lessons, friends in Christ, that God will teach us in the valley of life that we will never hear when we are on the mountaintop. There's a saying that God shouts in our joys, but he whispers in our afflictions. Because in our joys, there are so many things pulling at us. There are many distractions. But... When we are in affliction and we are quiet and still, when he whispers, we hear. So let's thank God for the mountaintop experiences and the valley experiences and trust that he will get us home. The final point we want to make is that praise is a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare. Remember the walls of Jericho? The walls came down at the shout of praise. Things happen in the spiritual realm that you and I don't see and don't know about when we praise God. When we deprive the devil of the, the opportunity to oppress us and to make us feel miserable when our faith, our faith rises through the, the ashes of disappointment and we say, I know my Redeemer lives. Praise releases the power of God in our lives and God comes through for us. Praise helps us to persevere in times of difficulty. It spares us on to finish the race that he has set before us. And Hebrews has something to say about this. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 to 39. It's an encouragement that we shouldn't give up when the going gets tough. In whatever situation, we should trust God. Hebrews 9, Hebrews 10. A call to persevere. I'm reading from verse 35. So, do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly re rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. The message says, but we are not quitters who lose out. Oh no, we will stay with it and survive 
trusting all the way. Amen. Let's pray. How great is our God, how great is his name. He's the greatest of all, forever the same. He parted the waters of the mighty Red Sea and said, trust me. Thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Father, and ask that your praise will forever be in our mouths. All our waking moments, that we will see the silver lining in every dark cloud and say the name of the Lord to, is to be praised. So even though we don't know what the future holds, we know that you hold the future. And when we put our hands in your hands, even when our hands are tired, your hands will hold us. Praises and glory and hallelujah be to your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We appreciate you joining our service today. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the logo. And don't forget to like and share. See you next week. God bless you.